Coming up is a description of how to experimentally verify the relationship that exists between volume and temperature of a fixed mass of a gas. So what we have here is that we are having a heater right here. Of course, this heater is more like our source of power. It's connected to our source of power and in this heater is meant to increase the temperature of this water. And we have this, temp this thermometer immersed into this water so that we are able to tell the temperature of this water. Now, right in here, we are having a trapped column of air or some trapped gas. It is trapped in here and uh, definitely we are looking at this length of this trapped air. This length of this trapped air is definitely directly proportional to the volume. So if we measure the length of that trapped air in essence, we shall be able to tell the volume of that air depending on the conditions in here. Of course, the conditions in here being temperature because uh, we are trying to establish the relationship between the volume of that air that is trapped in there and the temperature around that trapped air which temperature is being derived from the temperature of this liquid that is around that area right there so of course in here we are having this rubber tubing and the volume of mercury is right there in there this mercury can be adjusted using this rubber tubing but we are supposed to make sure that this volume is con the pressure is constant because volume for like I had earlier stated that the volume of a fixed mass of a gas is directly proportional to the absolute temperature which we shall be measuring using this thermometer provided the pressure is held constant in this experiment basically we will be heating this water as we heat this water we record the temperature we get the temperature of the water and the corresponding volume. We get the corresponding volume by simply measuring the length of uh, that column because the length is directly proportional to the volume. So we heat this water again to a new temperature. We re measure and record the temperature and we measure the corresponding volume right there. And that is how we will be able to verify Charles's law. So if I may state this, the procedures of this experiment in a logical order, I would start by saying that a fixed mass of a dry gas is trapped in a tube B, in this tube, which tube has got a uniform cross-sectional area. Now, of course, after that then, water in here is going to be heated for some time and uh, the mercury levels of X and Y are kept at the same level. Of course, they are kept at the same level because the condition here is that the pressure should be constant so we keep these x and y at the same level by adjusting the this tubing so that we are able to make sure that the mercury in here is at the same level that is how we are able to know that the pressure is constant so the length of the gas in the tube is then measured upon heating this of course it is measured and recorded and uh, we all know that of it is measured and recorded so when we record it uh, then we also go ahead and measure the temperature that is recorded by this thermometer so of course we repeat this experiment and different values of the volume of that trapped gas and the corresponding temperatures are also measured and tabulated in uh, measured and recorded in a table and after we are done with that, we go ahead and plot a graph of volume against temperature. Of course, when we plot a graph of volume against temperature, we are able to get this kind of line, straight line. And uh, of course, it reaches there. Of course, um, if we are to extrapolate this line, we find that it is going to end up at the temperature of negative 273 degrees Celsius. And this so happens to be our absolute zero temperature. Now this negative 273 degrees Celsius is what is internationally recognized as zero Kelvin and this is the beginning point for what we call the absolute temperature scale. Now I'm going to attempt and take you through how we get the slope of this graph. Uh, the attempt to take the slope of this graph is going to lead us to an interesting conclusion. Let's assume right here is a point. This 
if we may go ahead and find the slope of this graph the slope of the graph we can either use this point and that point or we can use this point and that point to find the slope of this whole graph and of course if we are using these two points or we will use those two points the slope of this graph is the same so let's go ahead and find the slope of this graph using these two points and we relate we equate it to the slope of this graph using two points and then we get an expression now of course when you're trying to find the slope of this graph using these two points or that point the slope is the same all through whether you use any pair of points so if you look at the slope here uh, we remember by slope we mean change in y over change in x so if you have to look at this point and that point and we want to look at if you move from here to there what is the change in y the change in y is this uh, v, uh, v theta which is right there minus v naught which is there divide that by the change in x which change in x is represented by that temperature theta minus zero this is going to be equal to still finding the slope using these two points and this is v naught minus zero over the change in x which change in x is going to be uh, zero minus negative 273 so here we're trying to find the slope between those two points use which is that expression and also we are trying to find the slope using these two points which is this expression using change in x and change in y and of course these slopes are the same and so definitely when we continue this becomes v theta minus v naught over zero minus theta remains as theta is going to be equal to v naught v naught minus zero is v naught divide that by this which gives us 273 now when we make divide v naught on both sides uh, we put v naught on divide it on both sides we end up with this expression being equal to 1 over 273 and now 1 over 273 if you look at this expression this expression resembles the expression that we talked about in our previous session the expression we talked about here in our previous session when we are talking about the the volume coefficient at constant pressure this is the expression we got and uh, if you realize this expression is identical to that expression so upon extrapolating this graph of the as we are trying to verify Charles's law we find that we are getting that same expression which is identical to what we call the volume coefficient at constant pressure and the figure we are getting here is 1 over 273 so what does that mean it means that the volume coefficient of at the volume coefficient of an ideal gas at constant pressure is equivalent to 1 over 273 or in other words 1 over 273 is the fractional increase in volume of a gas at 0 degrees Celsius for every degree Celsius rise in temperature so 1 over 273 is the volume coefficient of a gas at constant pressure this brings us to the end of this video thanks for watching feel free to check out other excellent videos on the channel and don't forget to subscribe for Kisembo academy this is Anwar Brangakuramia helping you manifest excellence